Hi everyone, my name is Maddie, welcome back to my channel and welcome to this video where I'll be talking about my favourite romance books, romance tropes, and then some non-romance books that feature those tropes. So I am an absolute hopeless romantic at heart and because of this whenever there's a romance plot in a book I don't tend to mind. I often absolutely love them. Yes there are certain fantasy books where it's just not necessary but overall as a whole I absolutely love romance plots in books but there are definitely certain tropes I like more than others but because of my love for romance I've recently started reading adult romance in the last year or so and have found some absolute gems. Most of these are very well known series, they're not particularly special but I more than anything want to talk about these so that you guys can hopefully recommend me some similar ones because I am lost with where to go next. And I know there's all sorts of parts of the romance genre, there's Regency romance and so many other things, but I specifically like the more contemporary ones and so I'm going to go through a list of my four favourite books slash series that are adult romance and then hopefully you guys can recommend me some more. But then once we've done that I'm going to talk through what tropes I like in these and recommend some non-romance books that also feature those tropes if any of you like those tropes as well. So to start off, the book that got me into adult romance in the first place is The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. This was going around booktube maybe a year and a half ago now and I thought it sounded really interesting so I decided to pick it up and it was definitely one of the best decisions I've ever made. I adored this book so much, it was so so good. And then I also went on to read The Kiss Quotient also by Helen Huang which is a companion novel slash sequel and then there's a third book coming out next year and oh my god I can't wait. But just to quickly explain what The Kiss Quotient is about, so this follows a woman Stella who has Asperger's and works with numbers and patterns and things like that and she has decided that she doesn't know enough about intimacy and sex and so she decides to basically hire herself an escort to teach her these things and unsurprisingly it turns into a romance and it is just it's so so well done it's so cute so steamy and I just love this. This doesn't feature any particular tropes that I normally love because this is actually just two people in a strange situation but then end up falling in love but nonetheless it is absolutely phenomenal. I'm sure you've all heard of this book a million times, everyone talks about it but for good reason. It is so so good and so sweet and honestly this is one of all of them that I've been wanting to reread the most and I possibly will but I, I love this. And then, as I said, I picked up The Bride Test. So this is the sequel slash companion novel. The main character in this is completely separate, but the romantic interest in this is in some way related to the romantic interest in the first one, which is really nice because you get little snippets and sort of cameos from the characters from the first book in this one. And this one is a girl from Vietnam who basically gets taken to the United States to be in an arranged marriage, but she thinks it's a pretty good opportunity for her, it can help her support her family, and it could end up being a really good way to get a way into the US. And it's so good because it is an absolute sort of hate to love marriage of convenience story, but turns into one of the cutest romances ever. And again, I read these quite a long time ago, so I can't remember too much detail, but they are so, so good. But that sort of hate to love thing and sort of fake dating-ish because they're being forced into pretending to date because she's been brought over to marry this guy who wants nothing to do with it but doesn't really have a choice. That sort of thing is absolutely my jam. So unsurprising that I also absolutely love this one. And then the third book, which I'm pretty sure is coming out in 2021, again follows a character who is related in some way to the love interests of the first two books and I'm so excited because he's been a character that is featured in the first two books and I love him so I'm very excited to see more of him and also see more of these characters again and I am thinking when that one comes out I might just reread the first two for a bit of fun because why not? I love them so much. So after that I again was trawling through booktube trying to find more recommendations and I don't think I found anything as highly recommended as The Hating Game by Sally Thorne so that is what I read next and I did like this one. I don't love it quite as much like this one I don't really have the urge to reread in the same way but it is hate to love, which is one of my absolute favourite tropes. Hate or rival to lovers, my favourite thing. So I was thrilled to find out that this had this trope and so I'm never going to complain. So this follows two co-workers who adamantly hate each other and are kind of mean to each other the whole time and they are vying for the same promotion at work and then kind of discover in both working for it that maybe neither of them hates the other quite as much as they thought they did and maybe actually there's a lot more going on there. I did especially enjoy, the one thing I did especially enjoy about this one was the tension. There was so much tension between these two characters the whole way through 
but also it was such a sweet romance when they got together and I liked how this had a really proper good ending that made everyone happy and there was no hard feelings or anything and just generally a really solid book but less so on my favourites and I'm not I don't think going to pick up the sort of sequel to this I don't think I have any interest but it was very good and I would happily take recommendations of hate to love or enemies or rivals to lovers tropes similar to this because that's my jam. The next sort of series I want to talk about I don't actually own physical copies of so I'll put pictures up on the screen and that is The Wedding Date and The Wedding Party by Jasmine Guillory. I haven't yet read more of these books, I know there are more, there's one I own currently called Party of Two which I cannot wait to get to but these are very much the two I've read and loved so much. The first one, The Wedding Date, is the epitome of a fake dating book and I love it so much. So this follows our main character who has to go to a wedding and it is his ex's wedding so he feels like he needs to take a date but he doesn't have anyone to take and then by sheer dumb luck gets stuck in a lift with a girl and hits it off and says you know what why don't you come to this wedding as my date? Why not? What good reason is there not to do this? And for whatever reason she agrees and it turns into this whole fake dating shenanigan and it is so good and so cute and I love it so much. Fake dating is oh, it's just, I don't know why I love fake dating quite as much as I do, but I really do. I think I love that moment where one or both of them suddenly realise it may not be quite as fake as they're all saying it is. So that's one of my favourite things and I love it so much. And then the sequel, Wedding Party, is really great because it follows the best friend of one of the main characters and also her co-worker who end up hitting it off but then they keep convincing themselves it's just friends with benefits it's nothing serious it's got a time limit it's just whilst they're organizing their friend's wedding together and they're hiding it from their friend so it's got that sort of angst because one of them maybe wants it to be known about and some of them want to hide it and it's just difficult so it has angst and it has tension because they're trying to be risky and secret about it and it's also got this time limit which obviously neither of them want but they're both committed to and it's just it's so brilliant i i'm so excited to read more of jasmine Guillory's books because i loved it so much but yeah highly recommend those because they're they're really good. And then the most recent ones I've read, which I have actually spoken about before on this channel, are Get a Life Chloe Brown and Take a Hint Danny Brown, the first two books in the Brown Sister trilogy by Talia Hibbert. I adore these books. I especially adore them because they're set in the UK. It was so, so lovely following characters set in the UK. It just was really nice. It feels like there's a different culture around dating and relationships here as well in some ways to the US. So it was nice seeing a take on it from the UK. So if anyone knows any other UK romance books like these, please tell me because I need them. But the first one, Get a Life Chloe Brown, follows Chloe Brown, the eldest of the three Brown sisters. And she has chronic illness and chronic pain and is basically after a almost near death experience, she almost gets hit by a car. She decides that she needs to make her life more interesting. And so she sets herself a bucket list and starts working on it. And then after moving into a new building and meeting the new superintendent, he ends up helping with this list and he maybe gets slightly too involved. And it's so cute. It's so cute. I apologise now for how many times I'm saying cute in this video, but it's going to happen. But I think one of the reasons I loved this so much is that it was so pure. They were both just doing things with the best intentions and then ended up falling for each other in the midst of it all. And yeah, it's just, it's so innocent. You see this genuine friendship blossoming and her sort of learning her own self-worth after other past experiences she's had that weren't so great and he really really just brings out the best in her and it brings out the best in him as well and they both work through things together and it's just it's so gorgeous and it's so good and also obviously because Chloe is one of three sisters you see the three sisters and their relationship quite a lot which is also absolutely amazing so just a generally all-round really really good book and then Take a Hint Danny Brown, which I did not think I could like anything more than Get a Life Chloe Brown. Then I read this and was very quickly proved wrong. This follows Danny, who is a bisexual woman who is working towards her PhD, loving the fact that this has bisexual rep even more so because she then ends up with a guy, which is not something that you see enough of and is a very valid by experience. So I loved that. But she has decided that she doesn't want a relationship. She doesn't have time, but you know, she needs, she needs to settle some urges, so she asks for a sign 
to point her in the direction of a guy to help with that. And she gets pointed towards Zaf, the security guard at her building where she does most of her uni work. And the problem is he has been in love with her for quite a long time and is an awful hopeless romantic. And she, well, she says she just wants something quick and easy. And shock horror after dating for a bit, for just for fun and very evidently both gaining feelings for each other. You, you can guess where it's going. I mean, it's a romance book. There's kind of only one solution to these books, but it's so adorable. I really loved both of the characters. I loved seeing this strong independent woman who both feels like she doesn't have time for a relationship and then learns that actually maybe it is possible but also being able to put herself first and that if she's with the right person she can have time because she's able to put herself first as well as having like a strong relationship. And seeing the guy be the really mushy hopeless romantic was also really sweet and just I, I can't say enough good things about these books and I'm so excited for the third book which again I think is coming out in 2021. So if you couldn't tell from the books I've spoken about the tropes I really tend to love are fake dating and then hate to love slash rivals to lovers. Those are absolutely my favourite things and so if you have any books that use those two tropes like in any genre please tell me I need them. So I am going to go and grab some YA contemporary and fantasy and anything else I can think of that has those tropes. So if you want those kind of tropes, but in a very different setting than like an adult romance book, keep watching because hopefully I should have some pretty good recommendations for you. The other trope I really like, which doesn't actually feature in these books, is sort of star-crossed lovers. So people who can't be together but want to be. So I'm also going to grab some of those because that's another one of my absolute favourite tropes. It just doesn't feature as much in these books. Okay, so I've just been through my shelves and found as many as I can. And we're going to start with fake dating so I don't have too many of these. I'm not going to go through detailed synopses of all of these probably, maybe like a one liner for each. Because I have got three pretty big stacks of books here. So we're going to go through it. But there will be timestamps in the description as well for which trope at which time if you want to just get recommendations for one trope. So starting with fake dating, I've only got three for this. I thought I'd have more, but most of the ones I normally recommend are ones I've already spoken about. But starting off with, this is sort of a marriage of convenience. So it's not necessarily quite fake dating, but it starts as them faking being in love with each other because it's a marriage of convenience and then turns into a real romance, is The Queen of Eoflaria. This is a female female fantasy novella and it is so unbelievably good. But this follows a woman who is moving to another kingdom to marry their prince to form a marriage of convenience. But the prince or king, I can't remember, dies while she's on the way. And so by the time she gets there, she's marrying the princess. And so it's just, it's amazing. It's in a land where homophobia doesn't exist, which is really nice. And there are dragons and this amazing romance. It's just a short little novella. Highly recommend that for fake dating marriage of convenience. Next are two YA contemporaries, both of which very much feature fake dating. The first being Frankly in Love by David Yoon. I really enjoyed this. This follows a boy Frank who, because of his family being Korean, are set that he has to marry a Korean girl and be with a Korean girl. However, he wants to date a white girl, but his friend, who is Korean, also wants to date a non-Korean guy. So those two decide to make a plot to fake date so that they can then actually date who they want to in real life. But shock horror, it turns into romance between them because how else would a book like this go? And it's really good. It talks a lot about culture and racism and all sorts of very interesting things. So this is definitely a really good read and I absolutely loved it. Next, one of my favorites is Hot Dog Girl by Jennifer Duggan. This does get some controversy because the main character in this book acts really poorly, but I think that's kind of the point. <laughs> she is doing what she believes is the best option, but actually isn't necessarily great. This follows our main character who works at a theme park and has a crush on one of the guys there, but doesn't think she'll be able to get with him. And so she decides to start fake dating her best friend, who is another girl, to get his attention and make him jealous, which is a not great thing to do. And unsurprisingly, it turns into a female-female romance and it's really sweet. But if you are uncomfortable with things like that and potentially using a friend in that sort of situation, especially to do with LGBT, then this may not be the book for you. But I found it really interesting to watch this character learn and grow throughout the book because obviously she acts poorly, but by the end she has learned and grown from her mistakes and it's a really sweet romance. So I would highly recommend this. So next I'm going to talk about books with sort of star-crossed lovers or people who shouldn't be together or someone in society is telling them they shouldn't be together. And I don't have too many of these, but there's quite a few. And starting off with one of my all-time favourites, 
Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. I won't give you a full synopsis for this, but in terms of the romance, this follows the main character, Laszlo, and he ends up having a romance with basically the people he is fighting against. And there's a lot more to it than that, but I don't want to spoil it because it's a really detailed book. But there is a sort of star-crossed lovers forbidden romance in this. So if you're looking for that sort of trope in a really dense fantasy setting, this might be for you. Another fantasy that features a forbidden romance is The Binding by Bridget Collins. This is a sort of historical fantasy. Again, I'm not going to say too much about how the romance plays into this because it's not very evident at the beginning and would be quite a plot spoiler. But there is a male-male romance in this, which is a forbidden romance. Trust me, it's worth reading. I'll leave it at that so as not to spoil it. Next, a couple sort of sci-fi books. The first being Cryer's War by Nina Varela. This follows two different races, humans and then people who have been made who are called Autome. And you're following a human who wants to get revenge on the Autome by killing basically the king's daughter. And then it may not quite end up that she ends up hating her enough to kill her. So that's quite good fun. This wasn't my favourite but it is very widely loved so definitely worth checking out if it's something that interested you. And again this is a female-female romance. It's, it's definitely a fun read and the sequel for this comes out, I think it's out in America and comes out next month in the UK so definitely a good time to pick this up as you can read both straight away. Next is one I don't think I'm intellectually advanced enough to understand but I did enjoy nonetheless and that is This Is How You Lose a Time War by Amal El Mota and Max Gladstone. Again, a female-female romance. This is a little novella and it follows these two people, red and blue, who are on warring sides of a time war and end up falling in love. I won't say more than that, it's very short. My one thing, if you are looking to pick this up, don't expect world building, don't expect to understand the world, just go into it, go with it. That was where I fell down, that's why I didn't enjoy it quite as much as I hoped because I was looking for way too much detail, but it's really, really good. Female, female romance, definitely recommend this for the ultimate star-crossed forbidden love as on opposite sides of a war. And then a YA contemporary book, again, Jennifer Duggan, this time Verona Comics. This follows two teenagers who are associated with rival comic book stores, but end up falling for each other. This is great in terms of LGBT rep because both of the characters are bisexual, but shown in a male-female relationship, which is really great. And also loads of the side characters are also LGBT. And this is such a sweet romance, but one of my favourite things about this, without spoiling too much, is that it gets much grittier than a lot of romance, especially in YA contemporary. This isn't all rainbows and sunshine, this gets quite, not dark, but it talks about some much darker things and that relationships aren't always a good thing, so it's definitely a really interesting read. I loved this so much. This is one of my favourite books, so highly recommend for rivals to lovers and just a really interesting romance. And then mixing it up a little bit we have a graphic novel which is On a Sunbeam by Tilly Walden. This is a very chunky but very beautiful graphic novel and definitely features a forbidden romance. It is female female again, I will not say too much in what way because I don't want to spoil it, but yes definitely worth reading if you want something like this. And also it's both quicker and slower, quick to get through because it's graphic novel but very chunky, so very very good forbidden romance star-crossed lovers-esque thing. So then moving on to sort of enemies to lovers, so people who, you know, start not liking each other or rivals or whatever and then end up getting together. I'm going to start with one which is also star-crossed lovers, as we've just spoken about that, and that is Daughter Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. This again follows two people on opposite sides of a war, so it's very much a forbidden love. But it also, I feel, almost falls into the enemies to lovers and rivals to lovers category more, so... A bit of both, but very good nonetheless. But to really get into Rivals to Lovers, we're going to start with some fantasy, and the first one being The Night Circus. This follows two people who are on different sides of a competition, very much competing against each other, but they don't necessarily know who they're competing against, and so when a romance starts to ensue, they don't necessarily realise that it's Rivals to Lovers, but it very much is, and this is one of my favourite books. It's a beautiful, beautiful fantasy novel, so highly recommend this for a rival to lovers, especially if you don't want the romance as like a really, really big focus of the book. Though it is relevant and a big point of it, it's not the point of the book as a whole. Another Rivals to Lovers book is The Whole Nevernight Trilogy by J. Kristoff. This trope actually comes up twice in this series, though obviously I won't say when because spoilers but this follows, especially in the first book, people at a school for assassins. So obviously everyone is working against each other because they're competing to be the best at this school. And there are romances. It's great. Um, one is male-female, one is female-female, so there is LGBT rep in here. 
it's really good. It's a very, very dark fantasy series. So if that is not your thing, this may not be for you. And again, the romance is in no way the focus of this book, but it's a nice little subplot and definitely fits the rivals to lovers trope. Next, a couple of sci-fi books. Firstly, Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. This follows a necromancer and their sort of aid, who is their sword and they are very much rivals. They hate each other, the sword really wants to kill the person they're working for, but by the end that may not quite be the case. I have not continued in this series, there is another book already out and a third one coming out in the future. I have only read the first one and again the romance is really not a focus of this book, but it's definitely there and it's definitely a thing you see developing gradually throughout the book and it is quite sweet, so definitely a good one for rivals for lovers. Another one where there's a lot less sort of hatred but definitely still a strong rivalry and competition is Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. Again this follows people in a school and so they are kind of competing against each other to do well in this school and it it gets really sweet. I loved this book. This is a super fast-paced YA sci-fi book which follows people training to be fighter pilots for spaceships and there's so much going on and it's really really interesting and yes again nowhere near the focus but running along burbling along underneath is this rivals to lovers rivals to friends to lovers thing and it's really cute i really liked it and i cannot wait to continue this series i've read the first two books especially for that even more so than the rest of the plot because as i've said i'm a hopeless romantic and i like reading about romance next up are a couple of dystopian books the first being this mortal coil by emily suvada this is a ya dystopian following a world where a virus is spreading and killing many many people and there's so much else going on but there is very much uh not even rivals to lovers but more of a hate to love plot in this um it does happen very quickly it is typical ya in that within about 50 pages you've gone from hating each other to loving each other but nonetheless it's done really well and it's really sweet and even if the romance is done quickly you still see the development of these people caring about each other and developing further deeper feelings even if you've kind of skipped the first stages so i'd recommend this it's very underrated this series actually. I really enjoy it and I need to finish it up because I've read the first two books but haven't read the third one yet. Another very well known YA dystopian is Scythe and I know a lot of people don't like the romance in this and I do kind of agree. In the first book I do not think the romance was remotely necessary. However by book two and book three I thought it was developed very well and I did really enjoy it. So if you can allow for the slightly strange conception of this romance and it kind of not being necessary it ends up being a really good rivals to star-crossed lovers romance and I really really enjoyed it. Again in no way is it the focus but it's fun to see in the background. One more which is much more of an enemies to lovers than rivals to lovers is Sawkill Girls by Claire Legrand. This is a paranormal book set on Sawkill Rock following these three girls dealing with this unknown entity who keeps stealing and killing girls. And again I'm not going to say too much because it reveals so much about the plot but there is so much LGBT rep in this, there is a female-female romance, there is also bisexual characters and an asexual character, so lots of rep and you do end up with a female-female hate to love romance, so check it out if you want that. And it's just a standalone, so it's really good and nice to get through. And then the final one I have for hate to love, rivals to lovers, is an extremely well-known book on booktube, but I couldn't do this video without recommending it, Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. This follows the president's son and a prince of Wales and they hate each other and shock horror by the end of the book they don't. I mean I loved this book. I mean look look at this. It's a, I've read this twice. I want to read it again. It's brilliant. If you want rivals to lovers this is a very good starting point. This is new adult contemporary so very quick, very easy, so much fun. Everyone recommends it all the time but I'm going to do the same and recommend it here. But that is it for this video. If you have any other tropes that you want recommendations for, please leave them in the comments and I'll see if I can come up with something. If you have any recommendations for me in any of these tropes, be it a romance book or a different genre that just happens to feature the trope, please tell me. I am always looking for books with star-crossed lovers, rivals to lovers, hate to love, fake dating, anything along those lines. So please let me know. But that is it for this video. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you got some good recommendations out of it. But that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some good recommendations. If you have any more ideas for me, please leave them down below. Or if you loved any of these books, please let me know. But that's it. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please leave a thumbs up. All my other social medias are linked down in the description as always. Subscribe if you'd like to see more content from me. But bye and I'll see you in the next one.